Hello, plum update. Um, I now have one of these. This is uh, the bi-directional buffer circuit that I showed you in the last video, replicated 24 times. I think I've come up with quite a nice, neat um, layout for the individual uh, transceiver circuits. So there's eight here, eight here, and eight here. Um, I've only got nine LEDs on them at the moment, but I'm I'm not I'm not wired in, so I'm not going to do any demo or anything. Um, it would be a little bit difficult to to see what's going on. Um, but it works, quite pleased with that. Um, so what this allows me to do is take the three individual bits from a three bit word, so bit one, bit two, bit three, and route each of those to one of eight positions within a byte. And the way it does that is by using the buffers to connect those positions together. So signals can pass that way and signals can pass that way. Uh, and that works, and that's all, all very good. Uh, so the next step, as I thought, was to hook up some SRAM to it. I managed to find some more SRAM of the, the same type that I'm using for the 64K memory module. This one here, which is buried under some stuff, but there we go. So I am i don't have to take this one apart in order to build this, which is good. And the intent is that I'm going to use three of these, and each of these will correspond with these positions here. And what will happen is I will take the three-bit words and I will store one bit here, one bit here, and one bit here. And then we'll move on to the next memory address. And then I'll store another bit here, and another bit here, and another bit here, but in the second position within the same byte. Right, so you've got like a sort of um, high level address and then a, a low level address. You've got the, the building number, which tells you which byte within these chips you want to address. And then you have the, the apartment number. Uh, which is which address, which bit in the byte you want to route it to. And these are all kept in sync with each other, so that whatever the address is presented here will be routing to the same position in each of these bytes. And this will allow me to store 3-bit wide words using 8-bit wide SRAMs uh, efficiently. Now, there are... Uh, perhaps simpler ways of going about this. I could have just said, you know what, we'll just store two three-bit words per byte and waste two bits. But I didn't feel like that. I felt like being a little bit awkward about it. So I thought, well, you know what, let's just parallel them all up, consider them one bit wide memories, as would have been the case with the old uh, BBC Micros and Spectrums and Commodores and things like that and uh, just parallel them up so I get the width of the word with the number of chips that I use. So I could have a, you know, a five bit wide memory if I just add two more and build two more of these. Not, But that's not what I want, so I'm not going to do that. Three is all I need. Um, now, for reading, this works just fine. Uh, because all I really need to do is just for bit one here, map it to the appropriate pin, and then the data is coming out and we can read it and that's fine. But for writing, it's a little bit more complicated and I need to build more circuitry. Just this alone is not going to be enough. And the reason for that is that with the way this is built, it there are of 24 bits that are being addressed, only ever three bits are being driven at any given time. All of the rest are left disconnected, uh, high impedance or floating. Um, now, these memories will still want to write eight bits at a time. So I can't tell it, please only write the third bit in your byte. It doesn't work that way. 
So what I need to do is to say, okay, well, the bit that I'm addressing here will be driven by one of these buffers. All of the other bits use the value that's already stored there. Um, so I think what that's going to require, and I haven't given it a tremendous amount of thought yet, so, you know, any suggestions, please do let me know. But I think what this will require is an intermediary register. So for each of these. So um, I don't think I have any to, to hand, but okay, this is approximately the right... Uh, Yes, this isn't the right chip, but it's vaguely the same. Uh, the, the right um, size of chip. <laughs> Physical size. Not that that matters. Anyway, whatever. So what we would need to do is to address, uh, to take the, the, the bulk of the address, so our building number, and provide that to these chips so that we're looking at the right byte. Then we need to take the data that's there, and copy it into there. What we can then do is say, okay, the bit that I want to write will be driven by this, and that will come from here to there, and all of the other bits will come from here, and we'll write the same data back in again. Um, I think that the reason I need, you know, I, the reason I need to do this, as far as I can tell, <laughs> is because I can't. Uh, these chips all have I.O. pins, so the same pins are used for input and output, so I can't, I can't input and output at the same time. So I'll need somewhere to take the data that's already being stored, save that, and then patch in the bit that I want to change, and then take this and write that back into the, into the, um, the SRAM. So... I've definitely overcomplicated this more than I needed to, but uh, that's the fun of it, to be honest. Um, this project has no particular goal, no particular purpose, it is simply to be, so um, why not? I'm not yet decided on how I'm going to continue to expand, expand these breadboards, but given what I've laid out here, I suspect it's probably not unreasonable to think that it might end up being kind of like this and more breadboards off to the side rather than continuing down so I can continue each track along like that. Um, now, if you're at all familiar with these breadboards, you'll know that they lock together here, like this, so I can hold one and the other stays attached. But they don't do that here. There's no, no facility to lock them in that way. So I'm going to need to get a piece of uh, acrylic or perspex or whatever, um, just plywood, and stick them all down, uh, which will require a little bit more commitment as to the amount of breadboard space I intend to use. But I suspect just one more column should be enough. I've got space for my register, you know, the, the intermediary register and then the memory chip and a whole pile of extra logic that may be necessary. So, yeah, so let's say the, uh, the memory chip goes over here. That can go somewhere and that seems like there's plenty of room to, to work with, um, so uh, yeah, this is where I am with uh, with Plum. If you have any ideas um, that might help me out, then please do let me know. Um, I'm not committed to a design. I'm definitely making all this up as I go. Um, I don't even have a schematic for it. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely open to uh, to suggestions. Please uh, please do let me know if you. Uh, if you can think of anything. Um, as for why I would want a 3-bit wide memory, well, that is yet to be revealed. I'm not going to spoil the surprise just yet, but uh, yeah, well, we'll see. If it looks like I'm never going to finish the project, then I'll just tell you what it is. <laughs> but it'll be fine, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. Eventually. Stick with me long enough and this will get finished. Anywho. Bye!